Ray here, and today we're going to be talking about how sometimes we may say things to hurt someone that we care about and not even know it. Oh no! Have I hurt you before? How am I supposed to know if I don't know? <laughs> don't worry, Cruz. You're fine. Phew! She had me worried. <laughs> sometimes we may say things or do things and uh, they might hurt someone and we may not even realize it. And when that does happen, there's some important things that we can do to make things better. This sounds complicated. How are we supposed to make things better if we don't even know what we did? <laughs> it's simple, Cruz. It's all about how we listen and talk to each other. It's also about time to <laughs> rehearse the verse. Today's verse comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 1. Say it like this. Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. Now repeat after me. Proverbs 15, 1. Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer. A gentle answer. Deflects anger. Deflects anger. But harsh words but harsh words make tempers flare. Make tempers flare. <laughs> Perfect. Now let's see how it plays out in today's adventure. Hello, Mike. How may I help you? I don't know! You don't know? What happened? I don't know! Are you having a fight with someone? Do you need me to help you learn about something? I don't know! I'm not sure how to help you then. Can't you just tell me what to do with like some purple dots or something? Sure. What did you have in mind? Well, I just finished my duties in the hub. <laughs> duties. And then I was going to take my post-duty nap. <laughs> duties. And then I started dreaming about sword-wielding Rhymer Reiners fighting these giant galactic cows and Salvatore Six, and they were driving Schumer tanks. And then out of nowhere, Alyssa wakes me up, and she has big frizzy hair, black teeth, and giant feet, and... Did you say something hurtful to her? Or break something? In the past, yes. Recently, I don't know. I hate it when my friends are mad at me. Alyssa would not be mad at you for no reason. Would it not be logical for you to perhaps approach her with an open heart and ask her what is wrong? When dealing with any conflict, good communication is the first step. Yeah, that sounds like a good place to start, but... I'm gonna have Nitro prepare the first aid kit, because with Alyssa, you never know. Thanks, room. You're welcome. I am so confused. I've never seen Alyssa this mad before, and apparently I've done something wrong, but I have no idea how to fix it. <sighs> Hey, uh, Nitro, have you seen Alyssa? I sort of need to talk to her. I saw her earlier, but she looked quite different from her usual self. I know. I know there's something in the Bible that can help me. I just I don't even know what to look for. Hmm. My memory banks cannot find any stories in the Bible about girls with black teeth, frizzed out hair, and huge feet in space. They're there, Mike. Mike and Alyssa are fighting, but strangely, Mike does not know what they are fighting about. It is very common for humans to misunderstand each other. Perhaps they can work through it when they learn today's point. Say it with me. God's love can turn a frown upside down. Well done. I hope they learn this very soon.
Alyssa? Yes, Mike? I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? Um, I don't know. <laughs> then you aren't really sorry. I'm sorry for not knowing what I'm sorry for. Ugh, you've gone too far. You are out of control with your practical jokes and they aren't funny anymore. I mean, look at my hair. Look at my teeth. And your big man feet. Ugh, I can't believe you would do this. But I didn't. What do you mean you didn't? I mean, I still do playful things, but I don't do mean jokes anymore that hurt people. I've been so much better about this, remember? Then how did this happen to my hair and my teeth? And your big man feet? <gasps> I, I mean, I have a prank pill that could do all of this, but I didn't put it in any of your stuff. <sighs> Look, all I can remember is I was enjoying my lunch in a nice glass of water, and then the next wait, thing- Wait, 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 wait. Did you drink the water next to the Illidium Q36 explosive space modulator? Yeah. You weren't supposed to drink that. I was growing mega-sized gummy bears in those cups and I had to use some of the ingredients from the prank pill. I even put a sign that, that says. Please don't drink this. Your teeth will turn black, your hair will get frizzy and your feet will get huge. It must have fallen down. The effects will wear off in an hour. I'm sorry. Are you so mad? No. You're my friend, and I know how much you care about me. And you have been better about doing fewer practical jokes. Besides, this reminds me of something. The Bible even has something to say about this very thing. Check it out. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let it blow up all the pages that this show gone off Let his word explode from this video into your life a long time ago, there was a woman named Abigail. She was married to a rich and stingy man named Nabal. I'm rich and I'm stingy. One day, David and his army had been running from a guy named Saul who wanted to hurt them. We're tired and hungry. Are you hungry? Go to that guy Nabal's house and ask him if he'd give us food and water. You got it, boss. Sir, can you give my boss David and his men some food? We've been traveling for a long time and we're hungry. Why should I give any of my food to a nobody like David? Go away or I'll run you off my land. When the messenger told David what had happened, David was very angry. That Nabal is a mean and stingy man. Come on, boys, follow me. We're going to Nabal's house to get even. Now Nabal's wife, Abigail, heard how bad Nabal treated David's messenger. She knew that David would be coming to her house to get even, so Abigail decided to do something about it. Sir, please take the food I'm giving you, and please forgive my mean and stingy husband. You're a great leader, and God is with you. Don't blow it by losing your temper and getting even with my husband. Thank you so much for the food, but more importantly, Thank you for stopping me from doing something without thinking because I was angry. You have stopped a big fight today. The end. Abigail used kind words to calm David down. Kind of like you, Mike. Yeah, because I listen to you. Because I care. And I don't want you to be angry. It seems like you've got this all figured out. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, it all started with good communication. <gasps> Ooh! Room, can you show us today's verse? Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer deflects anger, 
but harsh, harsh words, words make tempers flare. flare. I love that. And the way that Mike showed that he cared and talked to me shows me that God's love can turn a frown upside down. Alyssa, you did it! You discovered the point and connected all the dots! God's love can turn a frown upside down. That's a great point! And Mike, you're a great friend. Thanks, Room. You are both very welcome. Man, it's crazy how intense things got over a misunderstanding. Yeah, if things ever get out of hand again, I'm just going to remember today's point. God's love can turn a frown upside down. God's love can turn a frown upside down. <laughs> That's awesome. And the next time somebody thinks that I'm mad at them and they don't know why, I'm going to make sure they know that I'm willing to listen with an open heart so a little thing doesn't become a big thing like your big man feet. So a little thing doesn't become a big thing. Like your big man feet. Okay. Big man feet. Okay. Man feet. Gotta go. Harry man feet. Bye. Wow, that got crazy. And it ended up being over nothing. Isn't it awesome how when they sought out God's word, a bad situation got better and the frowns turned upside down. Oh, speaking of God's word, Ray, do you want to say today's verse? Do you even have to ask? <laughs> Proverbs 15, 1. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. And whenever you get into a heated argument with your friends or your family members, remember today's point. God's love can turn a frown upside down. <laughs> I love that. I do too. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> well, sometimes accidents happen. But when you talk it out calmly with God's love, that fixes everything. And that turns that frown Upside down. Man, God's love is so amazing. And no one showed it more than his own son, Jesus. If you want to know how to make Jesus the leader of your life, remember your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. Choosing to follow Jesus was the best thing I've ever done. And I hope you choose to follow him too. After all, he loves you so much. <laughs>